Lucas on board. We had a few red wines last night. I'm not sure whether it's that or the swell. It's not feeling very well. With Sunday Island as the largest of the Cumberland group, and it's largest by far, it was actually first named with Sunday Island by Lieutenant James Cook at the time when he sailed through the Whit Sunday passage and called it on Whit Sunday. Sid Harbour on the western side of Whit Sunday Island was actually used by the Americans to hide during the Second World War for their Pacific fleets. Today, we can put hundreds of boats in here in rough weather and there's still plenty of room. Shirley's found us a beautiful little spot on the southern end of Sawmill Bay and we can actually tug in really, really close to the shore and we've still got about two metres of depth. Originally Sawmill Bay was the site of a timber getting exercise and, and the timber mill and sawmill, which is long past gone. But not far over the other side, over near Dugon Inlet, on the northern side of Sydney, we can see a very, very large ship aground. Uh, Lucas and I are going to go over and have a look. So she's the MV Banks from Ulladulla. It looked like she was an anchor wherever she was, because the anchor and the anchor chain's been washed up on the shore as well. So she's obviously dragged in the cyclone. I'll do a bit of research and see if I can find what I can find out. Yep, she's the MV Banks, and she was the ex HMAS Banks, built in 1959. She was an explorer craft general purpose Navy vessel built in 1959 with a length of nearly 30 metres. She used to carry 95 tonne of cargo for the Australian Navy. She was decommissioned from the Royal Australian Navy in 1982, extensively damaged in 1995 with, with uh, a fire and then was docked and fixed and uh, ready for sale and she she was actually in my home port of Newcastle and up for sale in 2015. Since then I don't know who bought her but he's responsible for actually getting her off these rocks because national parks will not uh, allow the vessel to sit there so whatever it costs to get off the new owner is up for some big bucks but it's supposedly going to be pulled off in the next few days. She's not going to be a shipwreck for uh, future tourists to go and see. She hopefully won't be there when the rest of you guys come visit Sid Harbour. Lynn, would you like to tell the people about Solway Passage? Oh, we're about to go through Solway Passage. It's a small body of water on the way or the way from Hamilton Island to Whitehaven Beach and it's very susceptible to large currents and uh, big swells. Today we've got uh, not too strong a wind, but we've got large currents going against us, rushing down past the beach, heading down towards Hamilton Island, and we're gonna fight it and go through it. There's lots of whirlpools and pushes the boat around. So for the first time you do it, uh, it's uh, quite fun, I suppose, and uh, it gets the adrenaline going, but really it's not hard at all. You just stay in the, stay in the middle, 
and have uh, more revs and get the boat, keep the boat going a little bit faster than the current and you'll be right. But there's lots of eddies and whirlpools and it's quite spectacular. Absolutely beautiful, the water is so crystal clear. Probably about oh, three, maybe four kilometres up. So this is the furthest we've been up here many times, but this is the furthest we've been able to get. We're going to keep going. We'll keep trying. Looking forward to getting to see what it's like right at the top. never realised how far Hill Inlet goes up. We've been going for probably an hour and three quarters now and we're still going. We must be just about at the other side to Sid Harbour by now. It's absolutely amazing. We haven't got much depth now and, and basically it's marshlands and, and swamp on either side with sand dunes and it must be such a great fish breeding area. And I was going to canoe it with Shirley and at the last minute I decided to bring the dinghy. I'm so glad I didn't canoe it because it would have been a long canoe back, especially against the current. A lot narrower, about uh, two thirds now so we must be getting, but the good thing is it's got a little bit more depth. Looking forward to uh, finding where it starts. This might be it. I've been wrong before. <laughs> so there's definitely no footsteps in the sand. It's been uh, a while since anyone's been up here, I think. But, uh, well, this is as far as we can get. We've finally run aground. There's deep spots past here. We could da drag the dinghy up, but uh, and we might get stuck on the way back. We've got to get back before tide changes. Amazing, but I reckon we're gone close to Sid Harbour on the other side of the island. It's amazing.
anchor, it's, it's so still, I've had hardly any breeze through the day and not much for tomorrow. So we're going to drop anchor just off Hill Inlet. And we've done it before, as long as you don't do it in, uh, in strong breezes, it, it's all okay. So, and that way we can have some beautiful shots of Hill Inlet at sunrise. At sunset, we can anchor to Inlet. It's a beautiful spot. Not recommended in strong breezes or even uh, you know average breezes, but in low breezes, it's, it's absolutely a beautiful spot. Not many people come in here. They all go down into safer anchorages. Today's anchorage, Chalkies Beach, is just across Whitehaven Bay from Whitehaven Beach. It's on Hazelwood Island. It's only a short distance and it's a beautiful protected sandy beach from southerlies and southeasters up to about 20, 25 knots. So we're going to have a good night. It's our show. I don't know how and don't know why, but I'll I've been toasting all my life. Well, welcome to Chalkies Beach. It's basically due east of Whitehaven. It's actually a very, very good uh, anchorage in, in southeasters or easterlies. It actually drops off from 70 metres through to about 2 metres very, very quickly. Literally within 50 metres of coming in you've gone from 70 metres to two metres of water. So, and there's a thin coral reef that goes round, but in the middle of the beach, there's actually a section that actually you can get through straight to the beach without going through the coral reef. Excellent snorkeling, great little beach, and not many people come over. Fair boaters, I think, get a bit scared of uh, anchoring with the deep water in case the anchor drags, but excellent, excellent little beach, and it's a lot quieter than Whitehaven.
got a big fish. <laughs> You're gonna have to take him down the back because Shelly's not gonna be able to reach him with the net otherwise. Luke's been fishing for about three days now, hasn't even got a bite, and now he's got himself a good, a good fish. Here though, he's got another boat. Can he snapped out of your fur, Luke? Yeah. I feel like last night, actually. shallow it's got a reef on the, on the starboard side as we go in it's actually uh, you should only enter on an incoming tide so I don't know how far up we'll go but uh, we'll, we'll see we've still got another five hours before it's full high tide so I'm looking forward to exploring it's one of the few places I've never been in in the wet Sundays so looking forward to exploring it so we're coming up the shallow ground so through the entrance it comes down to one meter at low tide so we draw 1.2 so we definitely want to go through with a bit of uh, height there's some other boats in there so they're in there so we must have to get in too if it uh, looks a bit shallow we'll just stay for a while and wait for the tide to come in a bit more tramway that was used at the turn of the 19th century for carting timber along the island to where they used to put the logs in Gullnare Creek and then float them round to Sid Harbour where the timber mill was. So somewhere here we're going to find you know, the old railway tracks of the old steam tramway used for logging, we hope. That's what we're searching for. Let's hope we have success. find the old steam railway yet but the damage that the cyclone has done to the pine trees it's just basically blown them clear of all the pine needles and I have found the old railway or tram line but there's not much left of it it's all just basically rotted away here's a bit here I think
so far of the, the old tramway. There's not much left apart from a few rails. What we've read is up near the palms, you'll actually see more. And we've just put, finally spotted the palms after trekking for about a half an hour. Success. I've at least found some of the old uh, steam railway line or the old tramway. So I wouldn't uh, be expecting that much to be here in the next hundred years, but there's still some survived the first hundred years. Two trips, two days, finally found it. Um, you, you can find it if you head up the first creek and then you go right up to the palm trees. There's still remnants there. Um, is it worth it, Luke? It's worth it. It's worth it? There you go. Yeah, something different to do. I don't know. Yeah. See you back at the boat. It's time for drinks. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It's all we have time for this time. Next week, we're going to take you to Hook Island and all the beautiful bays and inlets, see the butterflies, feed the fish at Langford Reef, and then we'll take you to Hayman Island. So much to pack into one episode, but it'll be fun. I'll see you then.